So this is the overhead shooting rig. And this is like the fourth uh, incantation of this device. And this is my favorite one. It's two by twos, which are fantastic. And then angle brackets to make it all stiff. And I did something a little advanced in one of my angle brackets, I drilled out like a quarter inch hole. I'm not exactly sure the diameter, but um, enough to tap quarter inch threads into the angle bracket. And I tapped the wood, cause why not? And so I keep, this is the screw for the camera. This is from a sign. This is from a, somebody gave me as a haha van accessible sign so it's like 330 seconds or a 16th inch gauge uh, aluminum that I took a jigsaw and just cut the channel for this to slide and then for stiffness I used VHB and I didn't have two of the same size um, mending plates I would have done two like this but I was in a rush I cleaned the metal really really well with acetone and then VHB'd and clamped these guys on and I've been using it for months and it's stiff enough and the VHB doesn't doesn't give way and then these screws are for safety because I was carrying it once with a heavy camera and it like nearly cut my finger not off but nearly nicked my my pinky finger I keep it there so I don't lose it and then this is, I don't know what all this, I don't know what to call this, the rail. This is a specialty item, you won't find it, but quarter inch thread. There's a T-nut in the back of here with the teeth in it that digs in. Okay, so this goes up and down, depending on how wide of a shot I want. And then if I'm using a 100 millimeter macro lens, I can switch and go down really low if I need like a super duper close up like type, like to make type, type written words full screen. And so yeah, the overhead shot, Wes Anderson used it uh, in the opening, one of the opening shots of the Royal Tenenbaums when the book goes in and it gets stamped. And, uh, but I think before that it came from Agnes Varda in Cleo from five to seven and it's the only color footage in the whole movie, I believe. And it's uh, an overhead shot of a tarot card reader dealing tarot cards to the, to the protagonist. But I use it for everything because next to the face, I think the hands and what hands do is like the most interesting thing that humans do. Okay, this is a very easy little hop up. A strap that goes, I think these, this is an anchor for maybe a strap that goes around your neck. Yeah, it is. Um, I just do a little hand strap and if you let go of your camera or if you're doing something that's camera in or hand intensity, you're up on a ladder or something and you need your hand free, you can just, this stuff is so strong, I would even use it on the 1DX. And it's basically two feet or so, 18 inches maybe of, of uh, this, it's like very lightweight webbing, but it's super strong. And you thread it through the uh, shoulder strap anchor and then customize it to your hand, tie it off in a knot. And then over the years, it just sort of like becomes like, it, it just is like an appendage. Okay, this camera is from 11 years ago. I've retired it, I don't use it anymore, but I got a lot of use out of it. It's probably my favorite camera and it's a T2i Canon from I think 2009 or 2010. I put this windscreen on the mic. See, there's a flush mic. It's four little holes right here, but it's really susceptible to wind. So I just got this open cell foam. I don't know what it was from, probably from packing material or something. And I just sort of cut it and then made a little roof and hot glued the roof. And then I wrote the date and the name. I call it uh, Baby Jesus because it's the second coming of camera. It was like the first um, card based camera that shot HD footage. Before that we were using tapes. I made this plywood for a movie called Love Letter to Plywood out of fur plies. 
and I glued these together, clamped them. And this is little gadget is basically a little stand for your DSLR so that it doesn't, so they, they like fall over. Um, but with this, even with a big, even with a big lens on it, it's pretty diesel and it'll, you know, it's just a nice little thing to have when you're shooting, you can, you fold them away. And one thing I've discovered, this, this little guy hasn't been retired yet because though I've retired this camera, it's great for a GoPro or a, um, or an Insta360. Uh, let me see, I think I got a GoPro in here. Yeah. And so you can fold it up and put it in your pocket. I had it in my motor, I was wearing a motorcycle jacket and it fit in a, it fits in a, you know, medium size to large size pocket. And then you've got a little GoPro thing or, if you need to angle the shot, you can put little rocks under here or turn it around and have it point down. Yeah, it's like two and a half by five. This, it says, it has the date on it, 50420 for Zoom meetings during the pandemic. And this is also a handy little guy. It's just, I like this one, Ruitos. It's like an Amazon, probably made in China company. And I don't know, maybe it was $12 or something. And it's got the spring that holds, that holds your iPhone. And it's good for Zoom meetings, but it's also good for, you know, shooting. If you need to shoot stuff, it's a good little thing. And it's just a whatever. How big is this? It's just a uh, three and a quarter by four and three quarters piece of plywood or whatever scrap you have. I put felt feet on it. I love felt feet. So it slides around really easily. Clip light. I go into the clip lights in, um, in, uh, in the how to make a destroyer lamp for dad video. And one of the things I don't talk about is uh, how to make a diffuser. And the diffuser is just so that there's no harsh shadows when you're shooting. And I use it a lot for overhead. Um, lately, I haven't been using a diffuser a lot because I like the shadows for some reason, but it's a, a great way to get rid of the shadows. And this diffuser is just a white 13 gallon garbage bag. And you cut this off with a scissor. You cut this off with scissors. You cut the left seam with scissors. You cut the right seam with scissors. You cut the bottom crease with scissors. You have two sheets and you cut them into four. So you cut them in half, you cut them in half again. Each of those quadrants are the perfect size to make your diffuser, which you fold the corners and then you tape the corners and then you just put gaffer's tape or this two inch clear packing tape to hold the diffuser to the lampshade. And it sort of lasts forever. $14 at Home Depot. It's called a heat lamp. Don't get the one that's like a clip light. It's just not as high quality and the clamp isn't as strong and it, it won't really work. So, okay, cheaper to buy, buy them store-bought, easier to buy them store-bought, probably better, they'll probably last longer, but I don't know, the satisfaction, they won't look as nice, they won't be the perfect, you know, size for your setup, and that's why, that's why I do it, that's why I build them.